Dark type Pokemon, mischievous, sly, edgy. These are the Pokemon who haunt your nightmares and embody the shadow of night. As I said, very edgy. But what makes a dark type Pokemon? How has this type developed and evolved over the generations? Are they simply just enthusiastic shoppers at Hot Topic? Or is there something deeper, dare I say darker, going on with this type? But enough with all the unnecessary flair and mystery, we all know dark types much prefer shopping at Spencer's. Seriously though, in this video we'll be talking all about dark type Pokemon, the development of the type, its history, and its competitive status through the generations, to better see how dark Pokemon have evolved throughout the Pokemon series. So with that, let's begin. Dark types, being fashionably late as edgelords tend to be, were introduced in the second generation of games, Gold and Silver. Making its debut, Dark type from a development and gameplay standpoint were only designed with one thing in mind, nerfing the previously overpowered Psychic type. Back in Gen 1, Psychic type Pokemon were kings, as in they had the least effective weaknesses and no strong matchups to contend with. This is because at the time, Psychic was only weak against Bug and Ghost. The best Bug Pokemon and Bug move? Beedrill's Pin Missile. Yeah, that was seemingly the best tool to deal super effective damage to Psychic Pokemon. Ghosts also had an advantage, but remember there were only one single family of this type in the original game, and the only ghost moves available were either super weak or completely ineffective at dealing damage. I mean, just look at this stellar move list. Lick, base power 30, Confuse Ray, not really a type move, and Nightshade which deals damage based on the opponent's level, so it doesn't inflict multiplier damage. Oh, and to make matters worse, both Beedrill and other bug types, along with Gengar, were part poison as well. A type weak to Psychic, meaning the only Pokemon who were strong offensively against Psychic were also weak defensively to it. So obviously something needed to change. This is where we see the dark type Pokemon come into play. Their tenacious, mischievous, sometimes scoundrelly behavior was the perfect counter to Psychic type Pokemon. These Pokemon oftentimes thrive at night, being nocturnal creatures that prey off the fears of their enemies, cheating, faking, doing whatever is needed for victory. This primal fear is what sets them perfectly against psychic types, who often get lost in those fears and become wet and utterly useless noodles, being in a sense completely ineffective against and devastatingly weak to dark types. With this type's introduction, Gold and Silver brought us six unique dark Pokemon. Umbreon, a new dark evolution, Houndour and Houndoom, a family of dark and fire types, Sneasel, dark and ice, and Murkrow, dark and flying. Of course, none can forget the Mac Daddy of darks in the second generation, that being Tyranitar, a pseudo-legendary rock and dark type that was unquestionably the strongest of this new type at the time. Although its time-consuming leveling process was hard to push through, this monster of a Pokemon was completely worth it. Dark type moves were also unique at this time as all damaging dark moves were special damage. No matter how physical they may sound, moves like Bite and Crunch were special damage up until Generation 4. This meant from a competitive standpoint in Generation 2, Dark was more of a defensive type despite their average defensive stats being more on the low side. Pokemon like the before mentioned Tyranitar have great defensive capabilities with moves like Curse, Roar, and Rest, while also being type Rock form great offensive tools like Rock Slide or Earthquake. Dark moves, however, would only be seen on some offensive Tyranitar who tended to use Pursuit as a punish for an opponent switching out their Pokemon. Outside of that, Dark was more like a passive, giving Tyranitar immunity to Pokemon like Mewtwo, who would totally destroy in Generation 1 and continue to be powerful in Gen 2. Generation 3 saw a marked spike in Dark-type Pokemon with 10 new additions, those being Poochiana and Mightyana, the first super early Dark-types trainers could catch, Nuzleaf, Shiftstri, and Cacturn, Grass and Dark-types, Sableye, Dark and Ghost, a series of Dark and Water-types in Carvana, Sharpedo, and Crawdont, and finally one of the coolest Dark Pokemon from a flavor standpoint, Absol who despite being a pure dark type had a Pokedex reading that makes it sound more like a psychic type Pokemon. 
It sharply senses even subtle changes in the sky and land to predict natural disasters. It is a long-lived Pokemon that has a lifespan of over a hundred years. Competitively, in Generation 3, Dark types weren't doing so hot. Pokemon like Shiftree found some use with Sunny Day, but its low defensive stats kept it in lower tiers, which can basically be said about all the Dark types from this generation. Defensive stats hold them back. Probably the most interesting Dark type from Gen 3, though, would be Sableye, whose type being Ghost and Dark had no type weaknesses. That's about as far as the interest goes, however. Again, its low health and defensive stats meant that neutral hits ripped through Sableye as if they were all super effective. While Dark didn't see much love added in Gen 3, Pokemon like Houndoom and Tyranitar still kept the typing relevant in competitive play. In Gen 4, a change that already occurred in Fire Red and Leaf Green finally made its way to Diamond and Pearl, that being the introduction of physical damage dark moves. Now, there was a clear split between Crunch and Dark Pulse, for example, giving us new tools for both physical and special dark users. This change really helped out Pokemon like Weavile, the new evolved form of Sneasel. Being Ice and Dark, Weavile again falls into the dark trap of low defensive stats. Yet, these are made up by its speed and attack stats, making it a strong contender in competitive tiers. While Tyranitar had the defenses, Weavile got Pursuit and Ice Shard, which could more easily deal with Dragon-type Pokemon. Outside of Weavile, Dark types introduced in Gen 4 were Stunky, Skuntank, and Drapion, all Dark and Poison types, Spirit Tomb, another Dark and Ghost type, an evolution for Murkrow and Honchkrow, and Dark's first legendaries, Darkrai and Arceus Dark type. Arceus with the Dreadplate was in many ways worse than its Ghost type version, namely due to its weaknesses to fighting type moves. That being said, Dark Arceus, which just sounds cool to say, was still a prominent uber at the time with its amazing stab in Judgment and use of Calm Mind, Recover, and Refresh, which made it insanely difficult to bring down and annoying to play against. As the uber tier was filled with Psychic and Ghost types in Gen 4, Dark Arceus made for the perfect counter to the meta. On the other hand, Darkrai stood out as a superb pick in Uber with its high base speed and decent special stat. What made Darkrai great though was Dark Void, a move that puts opponents to sleep with an insane 80% accuracy. This was a perfect combo with Darkrai's ability, Bad Dream, which deals 12.5% damage to sleeping Pokemons per turn, literally kicking them while they're down. Dark Void has also been the perfect segue into moves like Nasty Plot, which increases Darkrai's special ability by an absurd amount, turning it into a frighteningly potent sweeper. There are of course some other great picks in this stacked uber tier during Gen 4, but Darkrai certainly stood out as king of the dark types. In Gen 5, we saw another huge spike in dark type Pokemon, or those who at least shared the type. With 7 families and 16 unique new dark Pokemon, trainers certainly had nice selection in black and white. You had the pure dark types in physical Umbreon knockoffs in Purloin and Liepard, the ground dark Sandile, Crocorock, and Crocodile. Get it? They're crooks. The uniquely typed fighting and dark Scraggy and Scrafty, Zora and Zoroark, Steel and Dark, Ponyard and Bisharp, more flyers in Volibi and Mandibuzz, and finally another pseudo legendary, this time part dragon, the first for Dark, Dino, Zoelius, and Hydreigon. Unlike a lot of the Dark types we've seen in the past, Hydreigon follows in its predecessor, Tyranitar, in having great defensive stats, only this time with a lot more special attack to make use of its Dark and Dragon typing. Hydreigon was very, very difficult to switch into as it didn't have any true counters during the time. It was on a similar level as Ubers such as Deoxys and Salamance. Its strong move pool meant it was capable of one-hitting almost everything that was thrown at it, while having the Levitate ability gave it one of the great benefits of flying without any of the type disadvantage. Yet, all this bluster doesn't really amount to much because of one crucial flaw, its speed which isn't low technically speaking, but falls far short in a meta filled with much faster Pokemon. 
Actually, as it turns out, being dark was a pretty big hindrance, as it made Hydreigon weak to fighting and bug while doing nothing to offset its dragon weaknesses to ice. While it could completely destroy Psychic-type Pokemon, it fell victim to other prominent types in that meta. While Hydreigon was good, Scrafty was unique, being the only dark fighting type Pokemon. This made this Pokemon particularly difficult to counter, as it took neutral damage from all other types save for fighting and flying, but flying wasn't as common in higher tiers at the time. Despite the type advantage and nice abilities offered to Scrafty, it sadly falls victim to its lackluster stats. It's as slow as you'd imagine a lizard with a mohawk, while not packing as much as a punch as you'd expect from a fighting type Pokemon. Overall, I give the developers props on the design for this thing, but still it's more trouble than it's worth. Gen 6 brought us new legendary dark types, a dark type starter, kinda, and of course Mega Evolutions, which changed some of our favorite dark types from older games just a bit. First, only a few new dark types were introduced in X and Y, those being the starter Froakie's final stage, Greninja, Pangoro, Inke and Malamar, and of course the legendaries Yeltul and Hoopa, its Unbound version. So let me get this out of the way, as Hoopa and Hoopa Unbound are some of my least favorite Pokemon ever, just something aesthetically doesn't sit well with me. So Hoopa's normally type Psychic and Ghost, but in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, you can give it the Prison Bottle key item and it will transform into the Psychic and Dark Hoopa Unbound, a more buff but just as stupid looking Hoopa. As far as Ubers go, this guy's pretty annoying, but not the good kind of annoying. More like bad, but bad for an Uber is still, you know, amazing. Its base stats are good, and it can certainly do some damage. Assuming it lives, that is. It has horrible health, speed, and defensive stats. Meaning, it'll get mowed down in a single physical move from a faster Pokemon. It's also weak to status changes and entry damage from Stealth Rocks, which bite deeply into its health pool. As far as Ubers go, you can certainly do better. Such as Vital, as I probably butcher its name again and again in my life, this thing has an amazing stat spread with typing that was super relevant in its meta. It was just fast enough while being just bulky enough, while putting out some respectable damage. It was a jack of all trades kind of legendary Pokemon, but of course with that came all of the potential downsides. Being an amazing user of Life Orb with Oblivion Wing, and having access to Foul Play, Recovery, and Dark Aura, Vidal was a decent and viable pick in Ubers at the time. It even had access to one of the most powerful priority moves in the game, a Dark Aura boosted Sucker Punch, but its stat distribution meant it wouldn't be that potent sweeper some teams were looking for, and its typing didn't give it much in terms of resistances. It basically stands as the symbol of Eh, okay Ubers. Of course, you also have your first list of Mega Dark Evolutions. Such plays on classic like Water and Dark Mega Gyarados, more powerful than ever Mega Tyranitar, Mega Houndoom, which I could easily make a more horn joke about, but let's keep this PG-13, and to round it all out, you have Megas for Sableye, Sharpedo, and Absol. I personally do not like Mega Evolutions, I just think they're kinda clunky from a game development standpoint. They're cool in that they reintroduce older, maybe less used Pokemon into the uber scene, breathing life into a meta hounded by legendaries and giving a purpose to low statted single stage Pokemon, but all the same, I think there was a better way of doing that than literally just making them uber viable. As Megas, they're all amazing, I won't go into each and every one, just know that the stat boost from Mega Evolution pretty much makes them all crazy strong in their own way. Finally we reach Sun and Moon, where Dark type again gains fresh blood through the Alolan forms which revamped older Pokemon to include a new Dark type variant. These included a Dark version of Rattata, Raticate, Meowth, Persian, Grimer, and Muk, who are all Dark type along with their previous typings minus Meowth and Persian who took the full Dark treatment. 
Honestly, alone forms, much like Mega Evolutions, seemed like a gimmick that couldn't last in the games as we know them. Again, it's cool seeing older Pokemon become relevant again, but it's short-sighted, and they really didn't go as hard into it as I would have liked. Unlike Megas though, Alolans didn't see the insane stat boost, so they didn't really see much high tier play. That is to say, except for Alolan Muck, who makes for a pretty decent pursuit trapper, especially in teams looking to stall their opponents. Alolan Muck doesn't have amazing stats and certainly falls short on the speed and defense department, but it does however have a pretty relevant ability in Poison Touch, and access to the all important pursuit. It can mainly be used to check special attacks with its decent HP and special defense, but you're gonna need to strap it with an assault vest to be sure. Of course, you also have Pokemon like Silvali, who can be changed into a dark type, another Pokemon with rounded stats that will cause it more problems in competitive play. Being, again, a jack of all trades, master of none, isn't great in a game built around supporting a team. In a similar vein, Guzzlord falls short of other Dark Dragon types, with its absolutely abysmal speed and defensive stats. Sure, it has insane health, but with just average attack and special attack, it's gonna be taking the hits and die well before it can do much of anything else. So that was a look at the various Pokemon developed for the Dark type throughout the history of this franchise. But the type itself also has some fun tidbits that sets it apart from others in this game. Like for example, did you know that Dark type is so far the only type that has not been specialized by a gym leader in Pokemon? There have been Dark types used in gym battles to be sure, but there hasn't been a gym that specializes and focuses on Dark types. And no, I'm not counting the Kahuna of Sun and Moon. If I did, true, Nanu would be a dark gym leader, technically. But as I said, to me, they're not real gyms. As such, we don't see dark types getting a badge boost in the games, making them the only type to not have a type boost in Generation 2. Despite their absence in gyms, darks have seen a lot of use by various members of the Elite Four throughout the game. Karen from Gen 2 is probably the quintessential dark type trainer, sporting an Umbreon, Houndoom, and Murkrow, gaining even more dark types in Heart Gold and Soul Silver with Abzol, Spirit Tomb, and Weavile. After their debut gen, Dark has seen stars on the Elite Four with Sydney in Gen 3 and Grimsley in Gen 5. Another interesting fact on the Dark type, it's the only post-Gen 1 typing in Pokemon that has never had a previous generation Pokemon see a type change into it. Let me explain, when Steel was introduced alongside Dark in Gen 2, we saw the change of Magnemite and Magneton to type Steel, but none for type Dark. The same can be said for Fairy, which when introduced in Gen 6, saw the change of Clefairy, Togepi, and Snubble, just to name a few. While Alolan forms may have changed older Pokemon like Raticate and Persian into Dark types, making Dark the most seen type in Alolan forms with 6 total, it's just not the same as having a previous generation Pokemon make a permanent change, something Dark will never get from this point on. And that, you guys, is basically everything I have for you on the Dark type in the Pokemon franchise. Dark types are, despite their edgelordy nature, some of the most interestingly designed Pokemon in the games. From their strengths, weaknesses, base stats, to individual aesthetics, Dark type Pokemon have certainly impacted the game ever since they were introduced all the way back in Gold and Silver, leaving us with a legacy that will only grow as the franchise continues. Thank you all so much for watching, if you enjoyed the video please feel free to let us know in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, we'll see you next time.